Okay, welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about how do we know the Big Bang actually happened. And so, instead of, before we get to the fine detail of the exact procedure, the exact history of the Big Bang, let's talk about what we know so far based upon what we've observed. First of all, we discovered the Hubble Law. The fact that the universe is expanding, and that the expansion, the, the speed at which things are moving away from us, is exactly proportional to the distance between the objects. A galaxy that's twice as far away is moving away from us twice as fast. One that's three times as far away from us, it's moving away from us three times as fast. And that would indicate that it's actually space between the galaxies that are expanding rather than the galaxies moving through space. So space, the universe, that's made out of space and matter, space is expanding in a uniform matter all throughout the universe. Hubble constant is the constant that then mathematically describes or indicates how fast the universe is expanding and now we know that it's about 73 kilometers per second for every one megaparsecond space. And so if we then take the inverse of that constant, one over h, then it tells us how long it's been expanding like that. Now there's some fine adjustments that need to be made because later on we found out that the universe expansion is actually increasing, the expansion is accelerating, but if we don't assume that for a moment and we, we imagine it was a constant and the difference in time is not that much, we know that the universe started about 13.4 billion years ago. With a small adjustment based on the acceleration of expansion, now we know it's somewhere between 13.7 and 13.8 billion years. But that at least gave us a beginning of the universe. Again, the Hubble constant is an indicator that the universe had a start. Thirdly, we discovered that 25% of all the matter, the visible matter of the universe, is made out of helium. And our theories about the Big Bang would not allow helium to exist. Particles would not form and make helium, not to that amount of abundance. But then we went, went back and said, well, according to the theory of the Big Bang, the temperature must have been very hot at the very beginning, after matter would have been formed out of radiation. And that temperature would have been so hot, more than 10 million degrees Kelvin, that the whole universe would be like the core of a star, fast and furiously converting hydrogen to helium. And we calculated out the speed at which the universe would cool down, the temperatures that would exist, and from our calculations we determined that about 25% of all the hydrogen should have converted to helium, and that's about exactly what we see in the universe. 25% of all the matter in the universe is turned into helium. CBR, the cosmic background radiation. We discovered that in the 1960s when we looked out, we saw that in all directions, no matter which direction we look, we see radiation coming towards the Earth, and it's fairly uniform. And that radiation must have been the leftover radiation from the very beginning of the universe. Again, if the universe didn't begin and was static, we would not have any reason for that radiation to exist. Next, we realized that the wavelength of that radiation was about one millimeter. It was in the microwave radiation band. And that one millimeter radiation would indicate that if the universe indeed had expanded, according to Hubble law, then that radiation would have been much, much shorter in wavelength in the very distant past because as the universe expands and space expands, the wavelength of the radiation within space would expand as well. And if that radiation has been around from the very beginning of the universe, then where it would have been very, very tiny, very, very short, which would indicate that that radiation would then have been of high, of high enough energy to make particles would now have stretched to a, a size of about one millimeter and that's exactly what we found. In addition to that, we found that the CBR, the, the cosmic background radiation, was extremely uniform. It didn't matter which direction we looked. In all directions, the radiation was coming from every direction, and it was exactly the same wavelength. It was extremely homogeneous in frequency, in wavelength, and therefore energy, almost beyond belief. Yet, when we send the, tel when we send the uh, a COBE out there, the satellite, to measure the radiation, we found out that indeed it was extremely, extremely homogeneous, extremely the same. So very homogeneous, again, indicating that at some point the universe must have been very small and all the radiation must have been exactly the same energy and frequency. On top of that, we realized that if we then theoretically go back in, in time, where not only did we create uh, or form, not create, but form helium out of, of hydrogen, and of course we didn't do it, the universe did it, uh, we also then realized that even before that, the universe must have even been hotter with the radiation having such high frequency and such high energy that it would have been able to make particles at that time. So we imagined that the universe existed full of energy and at some point 
particle radiation was happening at a very furious rate. It could have done so because the universe must have been so hot and so energetic at that time. Then, we, of course, we realize Olber's paradox. We realize now the universe is not infinite. The universe must be finite. If it's finite, that would indicate it must have had a beginning. If the universe has been around infinitely long, the universe probably would be infinitely big, especially if the universe is expanding. That's not the case. It must have had a beginning in the so-called recent past, even if you can call 13.8 billion years the recent past. We have the cosmological principle. The universe is extremely homogeneous and isotropic. That can only happen if the universe at some point must have been very small with all the matter evenly distributed. You would say that if the universe had always existed and would be extremely infinitely large, then there would have, must have been variation in the density of the matter in the universe, but that's not what we see. The cosmological principle says the universe is extremely homogeneous, again, indicating it must have started probably from a very small beginning. And the universe is not static as we found. Again, an infinite universe would have to be static because otherwise there would be a beginning. And an infinite universe would indicate you know, no start, the same thing all the time. Since the universe is not static, and the universe seems to be expanding, it looks like it had a beginning. And therefore, with all these things into consideration, we have a pretty good feeling that something like a Big Bang, whatever it was, must have happened. So from the next video on now, we're going to start taking a very, very close look at the history of the Big Bang one small time instant at a time, work our way through it to try and get a good understanding of the way we think the universe started according to the Big Bang Theory.